Hello, my name is Bethany Stahl and I am a full-time author and illustrator. If you are new, welcome to my channel where I cover self-publishing tips and tricks once to twice a week. And if you would like to take advantage of seeing all these videos and all these fun tips and tricks I am sharing, go ahead and subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. Also, if you are looking for more information, don't forget to go check out patreon.com slash bethanystahl where I have the self-pub squad and my workshop squad where you can join to get additional behind the scenes tips, tricks, documents, and more. So I will see you over on Patreon. Also, that is the best place to go if you have a question about your career specifically for me. So if you do want to get into contact, the best place to do that would be on Patreon. Today, we are going to be talking about how to design your book cover. So I know this is something I get asked a lot and I have finally made a video to show you. So we are going to be using KDP's cover template to download. So I'm just going to go over to the KDP website. I will leave that link in the description below where you can go over, plug in all of your book's information and then download a template. Once you download that template, you will want to open it with Adobe Photoshop. It does download in a zipped folder. So if you aren't familiar with zipped folders, you will have to extract it prior to being able to open those documents. So if it is not prompting you or if it is not opening with Adobe Photoshop, just right click it, go to open with and then click on Photoshop. That way we can customize our cover and it will ask you if you want to change the bounding box size, which is totally fine. You can say yes. So just go ahead and open that up on Photoshop. So once you get into Photoshop, I like to pull out rulers, which you can get from the rulers on the side of your canvas. If you don't see that, just go open to window and make sure your rulers are open. You can click and drag and a blue line will come out. And I like to put that where the lines are on KDP's template. So I make sure I'm centered and I'm not going over it because eventually as we continue, you will be no longer able to see behind their cover template as we put our artwork on top. So once I start my cover, I like to go through and look at all of my other illustrations that I've already done for the book. At this point, I'll sort of look at, are there any that I can reuse? So I do love reusing elements. That way it makes my job a little easier, a little quicker. And I do like having a cover with something from the inside, whether it's the same pose or maybe the same background. That way the child who is reading the book can sort of relate the cover to the inside. Um, I don't like going too wild with a difference on the outside of the book. That way they can see what they see is what they're gonna get on the inside. So for this book, I decided to use this sky background, which I do use throughout the book to sort of create one element of cohesion throughout the book. And I decided to use that in the background along with this little red illustration as she's sort of skipping and singing through the woods. And I figured this would be a fun way to show it's about Little Red based on Little Red Riding Hood. And then on the back cover, I get a little bit crazy with showing all of the other characters that are new that we are going to experience in my personal retelling. Or we should say Miko's retelling. For the font, I will go ahead and place my text down first and then I will try to find a font that I like. Now the two sources I really enjoy for font and you will already know this if you are Patreon members, but I really like the font.com and um, font squirrel. So those two are my favorite sites for finding fonts. When you do find fonts, make sure they are free to use or if they are not free to use, make sure you are paying the creator for their work before you put it in your book. 
Some fonts are not able to be used commercially, so you do have to make sure that you do have the proper permissions for your font before using it. So just like anything else, font is also copywritten, so you do have to make sure you are following copyright laws. I like to have big chunky titles on my books. That's just a personal preference. You don't have to. I do recommend checking out top best-selling books in today's time before you design your cover just to see what the current trends are and stay up to date. That way you know your book can blend in with them. So if a certain type of title or a certain type of anything is trending, or placement, you can have a little bit of fun with that. For my fonts, I do like to go down to the effects option on Photoshop and add a drop shadow or an outline. So that is on your Photoshop where you see that little FX button down at the bottom below your layers. You can click on that and open it up and play with a ton of different font options. I do urge you not to go too crazy because we can go from super classy to word art in no time. So just try to avoid getting too crazy with your titles. Try to keep it clean and classy. That is my best advice. And if it is a part of a series, make sure it is something that you are able to replicate as you continue on in the series. For the rest of the cover, I am just grabbing some characters and using their placements to sort of figure out if anybody else would look good on the cover. I make sure a little red is centered, and then I do decide on the back to include all the woodland animals. Since they are not actually in the story, but they are the ones telling the story, I thought they would be better suited on the back cover versus on the front cover so the reader isn't confused. This book is a book about Little Red Riding Hood, hence being called Little Red, but since it's being retold by a fun cast of characters, I wanted to make sure they were showcased. On the back cover, I will put a little blurb about what to expect in the book, as well as my website and any other pertinent information. You also need to make sure that there is space for the barcode on the back of your book. Let's grab a little red here. So here's my proof. And I always get a proof before I move forward. And oftentimes the proof is for me to look at and redesign. But I'm pretty happy with how this looks. And then on the back, I have the back uh, cover. And I made sure all my animals were on this side versus around Miko, like they do appear in the book just because the barcode will take up a place. So make sure there's no important information right here. And then I have my website. So I will show you a quick sneak peek of what this looks like inside. If you are looking for help with designing the inside of your book and what to put where and what to put in front of your book, I do have a document formatted for my Patreon members that you can download and that has what I put on each page in it. So I am going to skip the last half of this book just because it reveals who our surprising character is. So this book was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed the cover design of it. If you enjoyed this cover design, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will see you all next time. If you are looking for more information about publishing, go over to bethanystahl.com slash classes to see a huge collection of information that I have gathered for you separated out into topics. Now, most of these classes are free to access, but there are a few that are exclusive to my self-pub patrons. If you do want to join that, go over to patreon.com slash bethanystahl where you can join and get access to the classes as well as other behind the scenes tips, tricks, and documents that are exclusive to that squad. If you are trying to get into contact with me to ask questions, the best place to do that would be Patreon. I do see all of those messages and comments first, and I am able to reply to those almost immediately. So that is the best place for more individualized help.
I hope this video has helped and I will see you all next time.